Hello Year 11 and welcome to our next video here on differentiation. And today we're looking at rates of change. Now we have been looking at the derivatives of functions and the derivative perhaps we might describe as a gradient function. Gradient's really how something is changing. So it's not very surprising that rates of change fits in here. But in fact we're going to sort of take a step backwards and while we might talk about an instantaneous instantaneous rate of change as being the gradient of tangent to a curve at some point. But we're also going to talk about average rate of change, which is rise over run. Really, that's all rise over run. So that's the average rate of change. It's the amount of change divided by the length of time or whatever else we're comparing that to. Right, I've got an example here, and there are quite a few steps to it. So, here we go, a cockroach plague in Berrawong. Somehow, the council, while not uh, managing to get those cockroaches under control to begin with, did come up with this fabulous equation here, this quadratic equation, where P is the population. And the population in millions of cockroaches is 7 plus 6T minus T squared, where T is number of months after the 1st of January. So, on January 1, T equals 0. February 1, t equals 1, and so on. So, first up, differentiate. Find dp on dt. Differentiate the function p with respect to t. Okay, so when we do that, I get 6t, oh sorry, I get 6 minus 2t. Right here, 6 minus 2t, simple as that. Next up, we're asked to find the cockroach population on the 1st of January, so that's when t equals 0. I want the population. My original function tells me the population, so I substitute t equals 0 into that function there, and I find that p equals 7 plus 6 lots of 0 minus 0 squared is, of course, 7. So there were 7 million cockroaches on the 1st of January. Now, it also says at that time what, at, uh, what was the rate the population was increasing. So... The rate, the way the population is changing, right, that's going to be the gradient of tangent, right? That's the value of the derivative at that point. So we worked out our derivative was 6 minus 2t, and t equals 0, so substitute that in, I get 6. So on the 1st of January, there are 7 million cockroaches, but at that point in time, the uh, cockroach population is increasing by 6 million per month. Right here. Next up, find the cockroach, cockroach population on the 1st of April and the rate at which the population is increasing at that time. So, counting along, February, March, April, this is t equals 3. To find the population, I substitute into my original function. To find the rate of change, I substitute into the derivative. So, when t equals 3 is substituted in, I find the population is 16 million. When t equals 3 is substituted into the derivative, I find that the rate of change is equal to 0. So, the population has risen up until it reaches this point of 16 million, but it's no longer increasing. And knowing that this is right, merely a second order of polynomial, it's a quadratic, right? it's not going to stop and start increasing again. Right? That's going to be my maximum. So the maximum population will be 16 million cockroaches, but I think we're going to be asked to do that later on. Anyway, a reminder, we found the population by substituting into the function, and the way the population is changing, the rate of change, by substituting into the derivative. Now, when did the council stop the cockroach population increasing any further, and what was the population? Well, we just sort of stumbled across that, that's the 1st of April. If we hadn't stumbled across it, I could say, right, uh, let the derivative equal zero. Don't work with the original population. It's sort of hard to know what the maximum there is. We know the derivative. If we let that equal zero, we solve that, and we'll find that t would equal three. Substituting that in to our original function, t equals three, that will tell us the population was 16 million. But of course, we accidentally got that answer before. When were the cockroaches finally eliminated? Well, eliminated cockroaches would mean the population equals zero. So let's let 
p equals 0. And then we have this quadratic. I'm going to rearrange that a little bit, multiply everything by negative 1. And then we factorise that. We find that t must be equal to 7 or negative 1. Now, the negative 1, well, to begin with, that's December the year before. But we know the population rose after that. Okay, that's the first time it was 0. It started at 0, it went up, and then it came back down at t equals 7. And that will be August, 1st of August, if you count along through the months. So... We solve that by letting p equal 0. The average rate of increase. Now, the average rate of increase, I need the population on the 1st of January, the population on the 1st of April. I need to know how long between January and April. So, we've already worked out that the population on the 1st of January was 7 million, and the population on the 1st of April was 16. So the population has risen by 9 million cockroaches. From the 1st of January until the 1st of April is 3 months. So my average rate of change is 16 minus 7, right? That's the increase in population divided by the length of time. So the population increased at an average rate of 3 million cockroaches per month over that period. Okay, that's it for the example. That's it for rates of change for the time being. Just remember or be careful to observe the difference between a function and its derivative. Right? Remember the derivative is what gives us the rate of change, but I'll substitute two values into the function to get an average rate of change. Radio, right that's it. Uh, coming up next, we have, oh wait, there's a bit more information here. Yeah, rise up, run. Limits and continuity next. Limits and continuity. I'll see you next time.